Oh no, we didn't turn on the light. Oh gosh. Oh, hey guys, Laura's not here anymore. We, we lost Laura, where is she? What's going on? We even lost the uh, Whitbix. Okay. Anyway, hey guys, welcome to another live session from NZ Pocket Guide. Today we're going to answer all your questions about traveling in New Zealand. And we're going to be talking a little bit about life in New Zealand as well. So it's your chance to pick our brains um, about you know traveling in this beautiful country. If you're currently planning a trip to New Zealand, this is the best place for you to hang out with. But before we begin, we're going to get started with the question. Laura, what? when was the last time you opened an umbrella indoor? Uh, it's bad luck to do that, so never. Today is International Open an Umbrella Indoor Day. Oh, so this is the day you can do that thing yeah. I've always wanted to do. I do not know who come up with all those days, but that is ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we're here to answer all your questions about traveling in New Zealand because we consider ourselves like kind of uh, a little bit of the experts of traveling in New Zealand. But Laura, why are we the experts? <laughs> well, this is Robin and I'm Laura and we're the team behind nzpocketguide.com, which is New Zealand's largest travel guide. It literally has thousands and thousands of articles to help you plan a trip in New Zealand, obviously for when you are actually able to come to New Zealand, because at the time of this recording, the borders are still closed. Um, but yeah, that's still the unfortunate case that it is, but it's never too early to plan. And on nzpocketguide.com, we cover all types of travel in New Zealand, covering every destination you can think of. So why not go on there and check it out and plan the trip? trip of a lifetime yes but if you're not really into reading you prefer no. listening to our beautiful voices yes and um, you can come onto the live chat right now and ask your new zealand travel questions directly to us and um, otherwise if you do miss the live session you can go into the comments section below of any of our videos and ask your question in there and we usually pull together those questions just like this so we can go through those questions during the live session as well all right, so as per usual, we're reading all the comments uh, on, the, um, on the live chat right now. So, uh, yeah, we'll, go, we'll get to you. It just takes uh, sometimes a little bit of time, but let's go over everything. Uh, so we have Moshin that says, Morena, how have you been? So Morena means kind of good morning in Maori, which is the local indigenous language here. And we've been doing pretty well. Uh, yesterday, we went to tackle the Tongairo Crossing, which is uh, one of the most popular hikes on the, in the North Island. It goes uh, just just around and, and nearby Mordor from the Lord of the Rings. It's pretty epic. We went with a bunch of friends. It was a lot of fun. Um, but this is why our voice is a little crackly. And <laughs> this is why we are not as super high energy as we like to think we usually yes. are. We're kind of a little bit tired after that. Um, it's a it's, long hike. It's 19.4 kilometers long. Uh, mm -hmm. It goes over a volcanic landscape inside a native bush. It's, it's quite fantastic. And I will make a video for you guys about that yes. day, um, just so you guys get to check it out. But we already have a video on the Tongaro crossing on the channel. So if you want to get a sneak peek, you can uh, check that out. Uh, Nathan Bates says, good morning. Good morning, Nathan. Good morning. On the way to Topo. That's where he lives, I think. Uh, how are you doing, Nathan? How's the weather for you in Topo? It is amazing here. Uh, there's not a single cloud in the sky. We have Extreme Talauta. That says Morina. Again, Morina. That good morning in Maui, the local indigenous language here in New Zealand. Uh, we have AJ Shahal that says, hi, good morning. I hope everything is good. It is. Yay. <laughs> Uh, how is it on your side, uh, AJ? It says, I'm also curious, like others, about when the New Zealand uh, is going to open the borders for students. That is an unusual question on this live chat. Um, all right, so we do have a video uh, for our predictions, which is linked in the description of this uh, this live chat right now. There is a link that uh, includes, uh, you know, basically a ton of information about when we think the New Zealand border will open and how did we base our predictions. Um, but the long story short is that we don't think the New Zealand borders will open before November, December 2021 at the earliest, probably in early 2022. Um, there is really hasn't been any major news about the New Zealand border opening. And for this reason, we haven't made a new uh, video prediction just because, well, if there is no news, we, we, you know, we don't have a, much more information to base ourselves on. The only news that we have received recently was that the little country of Nui, uh, which is a country state associated with New Zealand, hidden in the South Pacific, is entirely COVID-19 COVID free. So they don't have any COVID-19 there. And their borders will reopen one-way travel with New Zealand, meaning that people from Nui will be able to come to New Zealand quarantine-free, and that's going to be happening before the end of the month. Um, 
so yes, that's the one. Um, that's the one thing that we know has changed a little bit. But since it's a very small country of only two thousand people, we decided not to kind of make a video about that just because it doesn't impact most travelers planning a trip to New Zealand. But that's basically the only news that there is. But that's to show you that we are keeping our ears on the ground. We're making sure that we get all the information that we can. Uh, we're gathering a lot of information for you guys and uh, hoping that we will be able to, um, you know, give you some positive updates as soon as we do have some but at the moment we just don't have any so it's a little bit harder for us to make predictions or anything like that um check Hose checks ozzy says when are they opening borders i think i just answered that uh, quite thoroughly but yeah definitely check the video in the description honestly we go so in depth into like uh, the way we did our research and what we're basing our, our, our predictions on and everything i think that's gonna be super useful um to you guys Clay Bryant, uh, all the way in Dunedin, says, Morning all. It was International Plumber Day on Thursday. How stupid. Ooh, how did you celebrate? <laughs> yeah, how did you a plumber? How did you celebrate? Did you, did you like polish a pipe? And, and, and also that, yeah, yeah, I hope your family gave you cards yeah, and flowers you... <laughs> and whatever. Also, please tell us where do you find a card specially made for International Plumber Day? I mean, yeah. I, I feel like it's a niche market. <laughs> Uh, Jurai Ganapathy says, Hi, dear friends. Hi, Hi Guna. How are you doing? Jurai, how are you doing? Uh, Clay says, uh, Checks kick it off early. No, that was AJ. Um, so mm. AJ was the first one to ask about the borders. Um, <laughs> you know, there's always, there's always like a, a question within the first five minutes about the border. But, you know, it's a big subject. So we're yeah. always happy to, uh, to oblige. Jurai says, good morning. Please tell me some good news about the borders opening. Oh, here you go. Uh, well, I hope that you watched the video from the beginning, but otherwise just kind of rewind. Uh, I did cover where we were at and what's the latest tiny bits of news that there is, but honestly, it's not that um, that really uh, insane. Um, Claire, by the way, did you get a chance to watch our latest video on Tonga? Uh, I know that uh, you, know, you were keen on checking out some of the South Pacific Islands. Did you, uh, did you get to watch it? Nathan says, um, I just watched a day 106 uh, hosting a radio station in Karamea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's our proudest kind of uh, yeah. moment. We, we did a lot of different videos and everything, but you know, that's something to do in Karamea. Uh, you know, we, we made a fool of ourselves for a good hour. What was the radio show? I think week, we were doing it for about an hour or something. Yeah, that was but, yeah, I remember the first 16 minutes was actually just silence because we'd pressed the wrong button. Yeah, so yeah was, I mean, you know, that's yeah. the radio show of the century. I have to say, we're not very good radio show hosts. <laughs> we have Anthony Comstock that says Morena from California, USA. Morena. If you guys don't know, Morena is, means good morning in the local Maori language. And right. Anthony's coming quite uh, late into the live chat compared to usual. Usually he's like, throw, throw you some like shade. That. Wow. Oh, I'm not throwing some shade. I'm just saying it's it's a noteworthy occurrence. <laughs> Anthony, you didn't get a good grade for your performance <laughs> this morning by Laura. <laughs> it's neither good or bad. It's just, uh, yeah, it just seems like you've come later than usual. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Michael, which is... Uh, currently tra traveling around uh, the south island of New Zealand says good morning from sunny Kawero. That's in the North Island. If, unless there's more, unless you're... Oh, yeah, that's it. So, that's, sorry, I got it wrong with the bridge where you do the bungee. Yeah. Yes, my bad. <laughs> North Island, here you go. Yeah, so that's a, that's a, a random little town between Rotorua and um, Toranga. So, or, or Fakatani, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Are you on your way? Which way are you heading to next? Are you going towards the coast where Fakatani is, or are you going to uh, going to Rotorua? Um, Nathan Bay say the weather in Topo is clear with no cloud. We have had wonderful weather. Yeah, in the last this weekend days. has been pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we did we did burn quite badly uh, going up the Tonga. Crossing. Well, Robin did. I mean, we I did I use sunscreen. sunscreen. I did use sunscreen perfectly on all my face and everything, but I did forget my arm. And uh, you, you know, should never forget yeah. your arm. Here you can see that was oh, where yes. my buff was, <laughs> and this is where my sleeves were. Okay. So I had my buff, and I was um, wearing long sleeves. And here is the part where I burned. This one here did not have a uh, buff, so this is where my sleeve stopped, and I burned here. Yeah. <laughs> kind of forgot about my arms. I did. I did very well my face. I, I'm <laughs> whatsoever. Nobody's taking that away from me. My yes. face was done. Yes. Perfect. I mean, you know, the money maker was protected. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh, God. 
All right, Ginny Joseph says, hi, good morning. Glad to hear that it's going to open. So my question is, once completing the course of students, are they allowed to apply for PR? So um, in New Zealand, there is a law that states that if you're not a registered immigration advisor, uh, you cannot give immigration advice. So for this reason, we have to be really careful on what we can answer questions on and about. So the only thing I can tell you is that some students are definitely allowed to apply for PR in New Zealand. Usually it happens through work. Now all the conditions and why and how and all that kind of things, you will have to go to immigration.govt.nz, which is the website of Immigration New Zealand, and there you'll get a ton of information. You'll be able to find a link of this website in the description of this video. I have it right and ready for you and that should help you actually start in doing a little bit of research and see what kind of jobs are currently needed in New Zealand and, and all that kind of things. So uh, it is usually a process that takes quite a long time and also is not really cheap so it's something you need to prepare for. So starting early doing some research on the Immigration New Zealand website is always a really good idea. Clay um, says that, oh, for International Plumber Day, say the supplier had pies in the warmer. Oh, at least you get pie, you know what <laughs> I mean? Like, Laura is going to open an umbrella indoor today and she's not going to get pie for it. Oh, well, we're not going to do it then. Oh, there's yeah. no pie involved. <laughs> um, Claire is asking, how many times have you done the Tongero Crossing now? Um, I'd say, I think we're close to seven, yeah. eight. For me, that was either my fourth or fifth time. I've I'm done a couple sure. without Laura, um, so yeah. I'd, say, I'd say seven or eight. Um, so yeah, done, done, done the crossing quite a lot. It's it's a really fun hike. Um, you know, it has a fantastic sceneries of the North Island. And because the weather was so wonderful um, yesterday, we were able to see all the way to Mount Taranaki. And mm. it was quite amazing that being able to see that gigantic mountain on the horizon was was quite quite impressive because we know how far that is. Oh, oh, how much drive, how long drive will it be to go to Taranaki? I think it's maybe about three, three yeah. to four hours away. So, so you yeah. can see three to four hours away drive. That, that's quite phenomenal. Actually, one time I did it with a little bit of visibility and we could see the sea, uh, you know, all the way in the back. So oh, yeah? we could see that, but that was one time. That was one off. And it was also, it was like a very clear, like clearer summer day, you know, with less mm -hmm. haze or anything like that. But yeah, that was, that was quite phenomenal. Um, Clay says, I did. I noticed Laura got out of that one uh, with just a few cameos on screen. Yeah, uh, it was more kind of like me trying a different style of video. Um, so we're talking about uh, our Tonga, uh, the complete guide to Tonga, which is a video that we published this week. I don't know if you guys checked it out, but I'd love to actually get some feedback from you guys. So if you guys are keen on watching that video, it, it's literally one of the latest videos on the channel. Check it out and tell me if you think that's useful, if it's something that we need to do more of or not. I'm probably going to do like another one of those for another country like Nui, just to kind of have two of them on and see if it's something that could um, you know interest you guys for me to do more and I could start doing things like that for New Zealand. Um, but yeah, it's very different for us though, so it's kind of like it's really awkward for us to know like is it mm -hmm. a good thing to do or not. Yeah. So yeah, please check out that Tonga video. That'd be fun. Uh, Nathan says, how far did you do the Tongero crossing? Does that mean how far along the crossing did we get? We or, did the whole thing. Yeah, we did the whole thing. 19.4 um, kilometers long. So we did we did the whole one-way trip, if that's the question you're asking. But if you are meaning something else, uh, just rephrase it in the comments and we'll, we'll answer that question. <laughs> um, so uh, Kashish says, uh, when do student visa student visa open um so the borders are still closed in new zealand um so it's not open just yet and there's been no official announcements to say when the visas will when they're going to start processing visas or when the borders are going to open but you can check a link in the description below to a video of our predictions of when we think the borders will open um as well as there's other links to um the Ministry of Stuff. What are we looking at? The Education? Ministry of Migration and Ministry of Education. Yes, yeah, so you can also see some other links uh, in the description below of uh, the Ministry of Education website, which has updated information and all that. So you can always check those links in the description for more information on student visas and when the borders will open. Um, we have Martina that says, hi, she's all the way from Germany. I think it's Northern Germany. Black Forest, I think, or something like that. Okay. But anyway, um, Hi, Martina. Thank you for joining us another week. I like remembering people. Um, and she says, have you been celebrating the America's Cup with Rod Stewart in Oakland? Well, funny thing. 
we are so we were doing a few activities around north end and everything and i don't know if you guys are following us on facebook but if you check out our facebook page there's a little video of our car being towed so this week a lot of things happened to us this week but this week we lost our car so it's going to be a bit harder for us to make our way all the way to the north island sorry to Auckland so we probably won't make it for the America's Cup because the mechanic uh, messaged me and said we need a brand new engine and that is not cheap and pretty long to you know arrange so we'll have to wait a little bit and the America's Cup is probably going to be sailing away before we can make it so that is okay there yeah. is always next time um, but yeah, a lot of like our neighbors is, is keeping us appraised on, on all the hips and happenings of the of the uh, America's Cup. On the, you know, he's watching it on TV literally every day. So well, we can't really afford to do that. We're busy. We do have works and stuff. But uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. But yeah, if you guys don't uh, don't follow us on Facebook and follow us on Facebook and see, you know, our car being towed. It's funny. you can see uh -huh. tidbits of uh, our <laughs> lives, <laughs> which include. The second of our New Zealand vehicles where the engine completely dies and we have to get a new engine. And to be fair, that is the second vehicle I ever owned in New Zealand. So after, <laughs> after we... Yeah. So they all uh, seem to go for the same fate in the yeah. end. <laughs> if, you, if you guys remember watching New Zealand's because gap year, at some point, our camper van completely dies. And this is exactly the same thing that happened, the same crack at the same place yeah. that happened to the car that we bought afterwards. Yes. So, and yeah. yeah, and that's actually happened to the car that we did buy to replace our motorhome. Um, and yeah, it has met the same fate. But it has lasted a lot longer than yes. our motorhome did. Yeah. So that's a good thing. Silver lining every time. Maybe we're driving wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we're doing something wrong when we're They're driving. automatic. They're supposed to do everything right. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, Clay says, uh, imagine heading to a destination only to find you can't go because a little bugger been digging holes in the runway. A little harsh, but I will be um, having bacon for dinner that night. So that's uh, referring to our... Tra our complete guide to Tonga video where I'm actually um, describing some ways a flight can be cancelled or delays in Tonga yeah. and sometimes you do have pigs digging holes in the runway and that means your flight's going to be delayed yeah so yeah little bugger and bacon <laughs> <laughs> I, I do like that I should have made that joke in the video if only I had you as my uh, joke writer <laughs> Michael says he completed the route Route 52 along the North Island East Coast of to Napier from Masterton. Today we're continuing north along the East Coast toward Northland. Road trips coming to an end too quick. Yeah, it oh, feels yeah. really not that yeah. long ago that you told us you left. And uh, yeah, it was way too fast. Can you not do another loop? Like, I mean, if I remember, you are retired, right? So just do another loop, right? <laughs> I mean, nobody stops here. I mean, if I were you, I would. <laughs> Um, Paradis say, hey, what's on that kiwi? Laura, explain what is it. So, um, on a few uh, live sessions ago, somebody said that they, they asked what the name of this kiwi was, and we said we've never named this kiwi, so we let everyone on the live chat um, come up with suggestions of things to name the kiwi bird, and we made a poll on, the, on uh, YouTube, and everyone voted for his new name. So everyone voted to name it Wheat Bix, which, if you don't know, is a type of cereal in New Zealand, which um, some people have some strong opinions about. But yeah, that's basically that's the that's the short story of how uh, this little kiwi bird came to become Wheat Bix. There you go. Nathan Bates is congratulating us. He says, well done for completing the whole crossing. Yeah, it, it is a lot of fun. Uh, there was a lot of people, though, so pretty much everybody completed it. So yeah, we, we were quite surprised thinking that because the borders are closed at the moment, we were like, oh, there's not going to be as many locals doing the Tongaroo crossing, surely. But because uh, the weather was perfect and it was a Saturday, and we did, uh, the only time that we could actually get the shuttle was... Um, was a little to start a bit later, so we started the crossing around nine nine thirty. That's actually kind of the busiest time to go. So we actually saw the crossing a lot busier than any other time we've done it when the borders have been open. So that was that was kind of interesting yeah. to see. But I think if anybody wants to try and have more of a sort of a, a, of an experience with sort of less people on the trails, it's definitely a better idea to go as early as possible and take one of the really early shuttles to get there at like 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. or something to start then, because then the trail is much quieter. Our friends uh, were 
Yeah, a little younger than us. So they do like their beauty sleep and they just try to remain young for longer. We don't <laughs> mind looking old if we get the track all to ourselves. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, Karen says, if you were to travel to New Zealand soon, uh, as soon as the border opens, do you think you would be able to have a full experience, all activities open, etc., like before COVID or best to wait a bit to settle? That is a very good question, Karen. So at the moment, there is a lot of, and I can't really say the word very well, but there is a lot of company which have decided to fall, fall, you know, like close, uh, you know, mothball. Like, yeah. So that means that basically they've decided to kind of close just temporarily. And so obviously it will take a little bit of time to kind of reopen, you know. Consider, for example, a hotel, right? A hotels will, you know, if they decide to close down and then to reopen after a year, there is a lot of cleaning to be done. You need to retrain your staff. You need to do all this kind of things. So it's very true that it will take uh, a few months to have New Zealand going back to full speed. But the good thing that we're having for New Zealand right now, the good thing that we have going on for ourselves, is that the locals are traveling quite a decent amount. So there is a, a good chunk of, uh, of tourist activities which are still open. Yes, in much smaller kind of capacity, like for example, yesterday when we went to do the Tonga Road crossing, we used a shuttle in order to get there and to come back from our accommodation. And so this shuttle company, what they're doing is that there's three of them that gathered together and one of the, of the, uh, of the owners kind of operate the shuttle depending on the days. And so like that, they basically oper operate at a third of their capacity. But they are still able to literally crank up the van and get started back at full speed when tourists are going to come. The other factor that's going to come in place is going to be, that's going to come in consideration is the fact that um, when the borders are going to reopen in New Zealand, not everybody is going to kind of come back to New Zealand, and we're not going to go back to the normal levels of, of tourists, right? So you won't have like those four million tourists coming in here in New Zealand straight away as soon as the border open. It's not happening, and it won't happen. It will take a little bit of time. A lot of people have lost a lot of money due to COVID. Have got some extra expenses. I've lost jobs. Those kind of things. So, um, so for this reason, there is going to be that as well to take in consideration so our estimate is that only uh, you know starting about 2024 then we're going to be back to a no, like to the level pre-covid um for uh for the amount of tourists and that's part of like all the that boring data stuff that we do usually with the website um since we run into pocket guide which is the largest travel guide to new zealand we have millions and millions of readers so we can pull some interesting data out of that so that doesn't uh, mean that you will have a bad experience in New Zealand. I think that the, the main attractions, the thing that you really want to do, will still going to be open. Or you may just have a little bit less choice when it comes down to operator. You may not have two different jailboats company to choose from. You may just have one. So that's going to be just kind of like the what's what the big difference will be. And also some of the operators which have... Uh, you know, which basically had a less viable business model. You know, they had a little bit less good reviews, they had a little bit less than that. They are probably the one going to fall, fall in first. So you're probably going to be less only with the cream of the cream. And uh, so that may be really good. So I don't think you will have a bad experience. In, in fact, I personally value more the fact that I have an intimate experience rather than having the exact one that everybody is doing. So I feel like I personally say that I think you will have a better experience coming quite early because you will have less tourists, you will have more of the country to yourself, and I think you're going to enjoy that better. So that's my personal opinion, obviously, but with all the information that I gave you right now, it's up to you to kind of evaluate which one, you know, which one is best, if you want to wait an extra year or if you want to, um, to come to New Zealand as soon as the borders open. You also, you're going to have to take in consideration the price of flights. The first few flights are going to be expensive. Mm. Yeah, I'd say first couple of months. Um, but I hope that that you know that did help you in kind of uh, you know your way of thinking about your trip to New Zealand. If you do have any follow up question, Kieran, it's a very good subject to address. So I'm very happy to uh, to answer more and to kind of keep on going over that that subject. Uh, what is Clay saying? Clay says um, I would do it many times if I lived up that way. Would you like to do it in reverse? Or would would like to do it in reverse, so that's what he's saying. Don't do it in reverse. It's so annoying to have to cross people in those narrow paths. Yeah, it would depend. Do it would depend on how busy the crossing is. But yeah, there was. Uh, it would be hard to actually pass other people on some of the really narrower sections. Um, yeah, so that that would be quite hard. Um, Paradis says, "Are the second-hand vehicles in New Zealand so banged up?" Um, uh, it depends. There are some second-hand vehicles that are banged up. Um, 
our vehicle that we had, I think we just had bad luck with it. It we actually got it. It was it was second hand, but it was second hand like straight from Japan, so it hadn't been in New Zealand for a long time. Um, it was just used as it looked like it was just used as a sort of taxi vehicle in Japan before it was shipped to New Zealand. So uh, it, it it lasted a while, but um, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it I think, lasted a while. I think it just had a. Uh, we just had a bit of bad luck with that one, but that's vehicles, really. <laughs> I mean, unless you get like a brand new vehicle, which I mean, not a lot of people can always afford that. Uh, you're going to run into troubles here and there with second-hand vehicles. I think. We're just particularly unlucky with vehicles. Yeah. Uh, we Adil says, uh, "Kiora, Robin, and Laura." Kiora. Uh, uh, sit, sit. Sida, 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 I think. Sida, Rutab says, partnership visa opening date and any good information for partner and dependent child visa? Well, um, there's been no no more information or updates um, that have been announced by Immigration New Zealand. So in short, there is no, uh, yeah, partnership visa opening date, no, basically, and any good information on partner and dependent child visa, no. No more information, I'm afraid. So you can always go to the immigration um, dot .govt website, uh, .govt.nz website. Yes. We do have a link in the description below to that website. So that's that's um, a place to basically get the updates on uh, immigration and visas. So go check that out. Michael Connell says, retired, I wish. Ah, ha, 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 mm. Sorry for calling you retired. I say, we have to go back to work to pay for the changes. We need to make the bus and fix the faults uh, we found for future full time on the roads. Okay. Hey, you know, you know, we're not the only one with, the, with um, issues with, uh, with vehicles. Uh, and Clay says, at the risk of hi hijacking the uh, New Zealand chat, how long did you go over to Tonga for? Oh, I'm happy to talk about Tonga for a little bit if you guys are interested. Um, how long would you allow to see more uh, than the main islands, or is picking one enough for a decent holiday? So we went to Tonga for quite an extended period of time just because we were writing this travel guide, right? So we definitely needed to stay way longer than what you guys will need to stay, right? This is kind of more of a job for us, and we're working with the uh, Tonga Ministry of Tourism, and we did like, you know, we teach people uh, like, you know, how to build websites and all those kind of things. So we, we do a lot of stuff when we get there, right? So uh, the amount of time is absolutely not indicative of how long you should spend in Tonga. Uh, on the uh, website tongapocketguide.com, we actually do have itineraries that will kind of highlight what we will do depending on the amount of time that you have. So when you go on Tonga Pocket Guide, you click on uh, trip IDs and then you have the itineraries that you choose like five days, seven days or 14 days and you see how much uh, we get into doing. But even if you only have seven days, you could visit a couple of island groups. You can visit Tonga Tapu and Vavau, which is uh, uh, all the way up north. And you get to visit those two things and have two very different experiences. So even just with seven days, you can have a really fun experience. If I have a choice, I will try to make it nine to 14 days just mm -hmm. because I love to spend more time and to make more out of, you know, like taking the flight all the way over there and everything to make the most out of it. I, I, I will try to do 14 days. And yeah. I think it's at the moment, um, from what we've seen on our Tonga website, you know, pre-COVID, um, this is the uh, most popular amount of time for traveling in Tonga. This is the, 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 the type of itineraries that people are more interested in. So people want to stay usually a couple of weeks. Yeah. And that will allow you to do two and even three. You may even be able to do a quick trip to Eua from Tonga Tapu and coming back. But I don't necessarily think it's that necessary. You can definitely just do Tonga Tapu and Vavao and you'll have an absolute blast. Yeah. Or Tonga Tapu and, and Hapai. Hapai. Yeah. Yeah, it, um, it depends what sort of... Um, what sort of holiday you're looking for because sort of Tonga Tapu, which is the main island, is is kind of more about the sightseeing, seeing really cool um, like historical places or seeing some um, caves to swim in and that sort of thing. So that's a good place to sort of drive around and see a few different things. But then if you want more of that relaxed sort of beach holiday, then you can fly to Hapai and sort of have that experience more um, in that island group and then you know you'll have a different experience in Iowa uh, which is more of the like sort of rugged foresty sort of place where you are more likely to see a bit more wildlife or um, you know have a, a bit of a different vibe over there so you know you'd have to be more like okay what sort of holiday do I want to have and then sort of plan around that because each island does kind of give you a little bit of a different different type of holiday for sure 
Um, Paradis is uh, talking back about New Zealand and says, are brand new vehicles too expensive in New Zealand? Is there a lot of government taxes? Um, so I don't really know how the taxes are working here in New Zealand, but you have to understand that in New Zealand, we have to import everything. So everything has to be imported into the country and that makes things quite more expensive. Also, the market here in New Zealand is really small. We only have about 4 million, 5 million inhabitants here. So, you know, like the cost of imported goods is not cheap. So, you know, for newer vehicle, you know, they start at, let's say, 30,000 New Zealand dollars to, to, to more, you know, if you want something of a decent size and everything. But, you know, some vehicles are like 100 grand and it's just it's just a big expense for just a vehicle, in, in, our, in our opinion, mm -hmm. at least. Um, so, yeah. But there is a lot of finance schemes that, you know, will rip you off very easily. So you may you may want to look into that. <laughs> uh, Nathan says, I did the Tonga Air Crossing with my school class for geography and I did it with clear weather last year. Oh, you got oh, lucky. Nice. That's cool. Is it why there are a lot of group of young people that sometimes do drawing? Like, did you have to draw the volcano and everything like that? Is, is that what they were doing? Because we did see uh, some groups actually doing a similar kind of things in some instances where we did the crossing. Is that what you have to do when you do that? Like, what do you get to do during your geography class while doing the hike? Do you just do the hike or you do activities along the way? Or how does it work? Tell mm. me. I don't get we it. You want to join your class. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want to know what, what, you know, what, what is it or you know just just i'm just curious basically yeah. photo of a lifetime and welcome back thank you for joining us on another session he says he or she says um can i get to new zealand in a chicken container so i'm there first <laughs> um i don't I, you know if like, you disguise yourself really well yeah, yeah. as a chicken also <laughs> you know, well, one thing that, that that i usually don't like when taking a flight is that when you are you are a little too crowded you know uh, because obviously we always like economy right so you sometimes get a little too crowded and, you know when you're in the middle seat you know don't know if you get the armrest or not you know the etiquette is that the person in the middle seat get both armrests and then the person on the on the window is kind of like has the window and the stuff and the other person on the aisle can put his feet a little bit on the side and has his other armrest but anyway there's always a bit of wrestling and everything i fit in the chicken box it will be an absolute nightmare to be able to <laughs> so that's what that was going. to make sure to make sure the etiquette is is applied properly and, uh, and yes. i do have enough room to... your biggest concern i'm is totally the... lanky your biggest concern would be the Etiquette in the chicken box. Yes, okay. yes, etiquette in the chicken. I'm totally lanky. I do sometimes need a little room to be able to move, you know. I'm not, I can't just like do that for, for, for 12 hours. It doesn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kieran says, thank you for answering that. Uh, you're very welcome. As I said, it was a very good question, so I'm happy to uh, elaborate. He says, I had initially booked White Kiwi to travel to South Island for two weeks in November 2020 Ugh, for my birthday. Oh, that sucks that you have missed out on your birthday. He says, I will likely leave it to November 2022 to ensure I can go uh, than risk November 2021. I think that'd be smart. Yeah. I think November 2022 would be a good thing. Um... Okay, people are talking about chicken now. Okay, Clay <laughs> says chilling, wet swimming, and uh, selfishly the history stuff, which I'm uh, into, not so much Lou and the kids. Well, then I think you know, honestly, especially if you get yourself like 14 days, you can definitely kind of um, uh, guilt free allow yourself a day or two to actually do a couple of history things while the kids are you know just going to the beach or going to do something more fun or something like that you know it's fine not that the history stuff are not fun there is some really cool historical mm. sites in tonga um but yeah I, I will i will do i will do 14 days i think you'll have a blast you do a couple of island groups and uh, and yeah i think and also the kids are gonna really really do like the fact that you will be able to show them a lot of variety as well yeah it won't be just a boring trip you take kids to a resort for 14 days just with the same thing yeah it's that's a long time well. to yeah. just stay in one place so what yeah. we really like about tonga is that you can move about quite well so mm. yeah uh, but yeah, check the website check the, some of the itinerary like example that we have and, and just come back to us and tell us hey you know like uh i'm thinking about this one or that one everything and we're happy to chat about it uh even if it's a new zealand chat tonga is not too far it, it's a great place to visit Oh, how am I supposed to pronounce that? Ziwi. 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 Hey, uh, says, morning, guys. Morning. Morning. Planning a few days away to Christchurch in June. Would you suggest staying in the city for the sites, shopping, and restaurants? Uh, we'll do Hammer Spring also in town as well. <laughs> sure. Uh, 
All right, yeah. so does he stay in the city to do all that, or does he stay a little bit outside? And also, he's going to go to Hamlet Spring. Does he need to stay in the city, or can he stay a little bit outside? Um, well, I would say it depends how long you're there for, but I'd say spend a couple of days in the city, then spend a couple of days in Hanma Springs itself, maybe. Um, because, yeah, I think I feel like Christchurch, it does have a lot of sites and stuff, but you can sort of cover them quite quickly in the city centre and experience the restaurants and all that. Um, you know, you can experience them over a weekend and then it's actually pretty cool to go and stay in Hanma Springs as well. And that that little town itself also has um, its own selection of cool restaurants and um, things to stay there for and lots of uh, lots of um, activities to do between uh, between obviously the uh, hot pools there but they've also they've got quad biking whitewater rafting they've got jet boat tours they've got a ton of different things that you can do over there so it's even worth actually staying in Hanma Springs because then you'll be closer to all those like different types of activities as well which if you were staying in Christchurch that would be a little bit of a long quite a long drive to get to if you were just facing yourself in Christchurch. And so to answer your question as well, uh, we, between staying in the city or a little bit on the outskirts of Christchurch, um, so Christchurch has pretty decent uh, public transport services, so you'll be able to get pretty much wherever you want from pretty much wherever you say, stay. But Christchurch also is surprisingly kind of small. You know, if you want to do the Botany Garden and Museum and all that, you can kind of walk pretty much everywhere if you actually stay in the city centre. So if you're only going for a few days, which is what you're mentioning right now, um, Ziwi, please change mm -hmm. that name. Uh, but yeah, so if you're staying just for a few days, um, I will actually stay more in the city centre just so you have easier access. You just can just stroll around and be able to go to the cafe, to the restaurant like, super easily along the way. Um, so yeah, that would be my take. I will actually stay in the city centre for Hanma Springs. No matter what, if you go to Hanma Springs, you're going to have your own car. Um, you know, nothing is really too far and everything. So yeah, if you stay like super central, you can literally walk from the pools to, to your accommodation. But it's also a very short drive and the parking, you know, options are not too bad. So you can, you cannot have much more freedom. Um, yeah, if you do that trip over there, and if you come from quite far, just make sure you don't miss Kaikura as well. It's it's not too far from like those two places and everything, and it's definitely a fantastic place to visit with amazing marine wildlife. Well, it was some of our best like memories over there. We do really love Kaikura. So yeah, um, if we didn't get uh, your entire question, uh, just make sure to uh, you know ask a follow up. We're happy to um, you know to oblige. But I think that we covered it pretty well. Clay said, send me a video on the crossing. And he says, Peter Pan said, never grow up. I am afraid of looking, but I will. <laughs> um, can you read what Nathan says? Uh, Nathan says, uh, we did some paperwork the day before and walked to Soda Springs the next day. Okay, so you didn't do the entire crossing with the kids. I was thinking that doing... Uh, a school trip on the... Doing the entire crossing while doing, like, school work was, was quite a... Yeah, that would be quite intense, I imagine, as a school trip. But if you just go to Soda Springs, that's quite nice. Um, that's not too too much of a hard work. Um, photo of a lifetime. What's the video? <laughs> oh. <laughs> just, just. Everyone yeah. says that, basically says or thinks that when they get to that part <laughs> yeah we can't that uh, no that's not yeah no we won't share channel, that with other not channel but yeah rolls. okay <laughs> moving on nathan we already did that photo for a lifetime says what is the best airline you would recommend for flying to new zealand from the uk thank you um i like Cathay pacific if I have to yes start. i can i can get started Cathay pacific is um i always had really good experience with them i flew with them about two three times now um i think they're pretty good really awesome service they're based in hong kong so you get to hong kong as well which is a really cool hub uh you can actually do a stay over in hong kong i think they give you up to uh, eight or 12 hours so you can even escape the airport and go check out the city and come back uh, which is pretty cool so yeah, uh, I, I like Cathay Pacific. They're pretty highly rated, pretty good service. Um, I think you were talking about Singapore Airlines at some point, weren't you? Um, I've never taken Singapore Airlines. Uh, you stole mine. I do. I I've flown to Cathay Pacific, and they were probably the best one. That okay, I've Singapore Airlines is also a very very yeah. good option, by the way. Um, yeah. You know, they're, 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 if I have to say, um, food wise. I think Singapore Airlines has one of the best um, amount of like the best food in planes. As far as food in planes can be good, <laughs> it's not that good, but you know, I mean, it's, it's just really good. Uh, same thing, fantastic service, really good, 
really, you know, really easy connections as well. I, I think they're pretty good. And both of those companies are actually tend to be quite decently priced um, compared to other like more, um, uh, let's say, usual kind of uh, flyers such as Qantas or New Zealand. They usually get to save some money going uh, with yeah. those guys. Yeah, those guys. Uh, that's usually where I found the the best deals. Um, but yeah, usually, usually my sort of mantra with that is just going for the company that has like. Uh, kind of the most direct flights at the best price. And uh, one time for me, that was Cathay Pacific. Another time it was Air New Zealand. But Air New Zealand usually is a bit more expensive for the long haul flights anyway. So you'd have to be quite lucky to find a good deal there. Uh, Clay is asking, Nui versus Tonga. I think, uh, so I'm probably going to be doing, so the same video I did for Tonga, I probably will be doing a video for Nui. So you'll be able to kind of evaluate for yourself. It's extremely different ways to holiday like yeah. very very different uh in new way you won't really be feeling not home you know you they use new zealand dollars there is kiwi bank over there it's quite small uh you know you stay in the same place for the whole time you know it's very it's a very very different way to travel so it really depends on your travel style i think that they're very hard comparison mm. i think they're very I think if you, yeah i think if you want something that feels familiar they do have obviously some aspects of like the new and culture and stuff there that you could that there's a little bit of that feeling but compared to Tonga you feel like you are really going to a completely different country than New Zealand that has its own culture and it's you know it's it, it feels like you're really going on on holiday abroad whereas in Nui it's exotic us, Tonga is really exotic yeah Tonga is really exotic whereas in Nui it kind of feels like it's it's a little bit exotic but it, it has a lot of familiar things there if you're coming from New Zealand it feels like if a, New Zealand was a South Pacific island that yeah would, it's know. a tropical New Zealand basically you could and the, even the way you travel around it and the way you experience it is quite similar to New Zealand you travel around like Every two, every 20 minutes on the road, you come across like a natural attraction where you do like a short walk to get to it and you see something really cool and amazing that Mother Nature has formed and stuff. And that's very similar to New Zealand in the way that you experience it. Of course, the attractions that you're visiting are very different to what you see in New Zealand. But if you want that familiarity and something that will feel easy to do, like an easy holiday, then that's what Nui offers. Yeah, I don't you agree. Uh, on the other hand, the ease as well is that you're probably going to be traveling with kids and in mm. Nui, uh, you will have a harder time getting the kids over the corals and everything like that. While in Tonga, you, the, you know, it's a bit more approachable because Nui is literally just a rock and there's a big drop off. So a lot of like the coral activities and everything are literally kind of at sea. So I will, I will, yeah, I, let me just do that other video. Yeah. Then you can compare them and everything. And also that will allow me to kind of like compare these kind of things a little bit. Uh, okay, Phoebe um, says, hello guys, I hope that you guys are having a great morning. We're having a wonderful morning. We are recovering from the Tonga River crossing. We just died uh, close to 20 kilometers. We are <laughs> drinking some hot drinks and uh, trying to deal with our sunburn. Pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, do you have any update for, international, for when international undergraduate students can go to New Zealand? Thank you. She says bachelor students, actually. Um, no new updates, I'm afraid. Uh, the borders uh, to international students and international travellers are still close in New Zealand. There's been no official new information, but you can find a link in the description below um, to the Ministry of Education website, which is where you can find more information um, about international students. Um, and you can also check out Immigration's, uh, Immigration New Zealand's website for more information about the borders. And our latest uh, border opening prediction video is also linked in the description and that will give you uh, where we stand right now as predicting when this is opening. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, while you guys are warming up with some more questions, we are going to go through a question that we received last week from Chris on YouTube. So uh, Chris, Chris Nelson actually sent us uh, the, the question on both Facebook and YouTube to make sure that we got it. <laughs> and he says, um, I am in the early stages of planning a trip to New Zealand. There are so many things we would love to do while there. But the main attraction for me is the opportunity to see orca whales in the wild. Can you give any advices, ad any advice on what part of the country gives the best chance to see them and what time of the year? Any and all advice is welcome. Thanks in advance. All right, Chris. So 
there are a lot of different types of wells that can be seen around New Zealand. And I have to say, orca wells are not necessarily the number one on the list. Uh, you can see fantastic sperm whales uh, around the coast of Kaikoura, for example. You can see bride's whales around the coast of Auckland in the Haraki Gulf. You can also swim with dolphins, uh, all types of dolphins, common dolphins. Uh, what's the one in Kaikoura? Dusky dolphins. Dusky dolphins, bottlenose dolphins. Bottlenose yeah. dolphins. There's a lot of dolphins. Uh, so my, marine mammals um, are, are galore. One of my favorite activity actually in New Zealand is to do seal swimming um, and there is a company called Seal Swim Kaikura in the South Island which actually allows you to go sw swim with seals which is another fantastic uh, marine mammal. But uh, you are correct, orcas are actually uh, you know uh, visible in New Zealand, they're actually a semi-common occurrence, it's just harder to pinpoint where they are. Mm -hmm. But uh, here is some information on where and when to see orcas in beautiful New Zealand. Okay, um, so the first thing to know is that um, seeing orcas in New Zealand, like as a tourist, is pretty rare. It's usually locals that get to see them because they're in the right place at the right time. Um, for us, we've actually never seen orcas in New Zealand. We have been on whale tours where literally the uh, boat that's gone out after us has seen orcas, but we've missed it. And it's really like, you have to be lucky basically. So just to get that really clear, you can't really go on any tours where they can guarantee you orca viewings. In short, orca, orca sighting in New Zealand is much less predictable. Um, yes. There are some countries in the world which actually have somewhat really predictable orca uh, sites sighting and they literally have tools which literally just take you to go see orcas but in new zealand it will be more like oh we got really lucky on that tour to get to see the orcas yeah so um orcas when they when you can see them um which by the way uh, orcas are usually swimming around new zealand between spring and summer um and uh, so just so you know for usually that is between november and march um is when you're most likely to see them um and yeah usually when they are around new zealand they don't stay in one place for long so when there are sightings there's usually basically they'll be somewhere else very quickly so you can't really stick around in one place and hope to see them you just again have to be lucky but some places where they have been spotted around new zealand um include the bay of islands which is in the north island they've been seen in wellington harbour um again on the north island um in the marlborough sounds which is uh near picton at the top of the south island in Kaikoura, you can see them. Kaikoura is really renowned for its um, whales and marine wildlife there. And Kaikoura tends to be the place where orcas are spotted the most. And um, so if you were really trying to, um, you know, trying to be extra, you know, increase your look, basically, Kaikoura would be a good place to stick around. Um, and yeah, equally, they've been they've been seen in uh, the uh, Bay of Plenty. So, you know, Toranga, Fakatani area. Um, and the list goes on. Honestly, they have been spotted in odd places around New Zealand. Um, but yeah, usually in the spring and summer months uh, in the Marlborough Sounds and the Bay of Islands area, they they tend to have been seen in a more of a smaller time frame between May and July. Um, so more towards, uh, yeah, uh, that's more towards winter. But yeah, that's <laughs> that's like the just the information that we've put all together. All cats cannot make up their mind. Yeah, sense. so basically they are moving all the time. Um, other than humans, they are the most uh, widely distributed mammal on the on the planet. So they are moving around a lot. And yeah. Here's a fun fact by Laura. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you do have to uh, just you just have to be lucky. But um, like I say, the best time to come is probably just try to come to uh, Kaikoura around um, between November and March and stay a few days. Maybe see a did like do a um, a whale watching flight, then a whale watching uh, boat tour. Try and do a few different whale watching experiences and keep your fingers crossed and hope that you see them. But uh, that's basically as much information as we can give you on um being able to see orca in new zealand i hope that you're luckier than we have been um because yeah we haven't seen them yet so uh, on nzpocketguide.com we do have some uh, articles to help you plan your trip around uh well sightseeing in new zealand we for example have an article um called the five best places in new zealand to see whales um and so there's really a lot of information for you in there in order to see for you to select which activities you want to do and where so yeah there's a ton of information on here and i will put a link to it in the description below
bore you, Chris. But I hope that this will help you and your partner have the best time in New Zealand. And yeah, again, New Zealand is not necessarily the number one country for orca sightseeing. So if you are coming here solely for that, I strongly encourage you to check out the website and check out some other amazing things to do in New Zealand in order for you to have a, a fantastic time here. I mean, we have penguins, we have <laughs> seals, we have amazing birds. You, different, you have a blast. different types of species yeah, of whales. You exactly. Can see, we so, have sea yeah. lions. You know, we, we have a ton, and we also have videos of, of us on the channel checking out all those awesome wildlife. So you may want to see what you get to see in New Zealand. In the meantime, thank you for uh, watching this video. Like and subscribe if you want to say thank you for all our hard work. It's a free way for you. To say thank you to us so here you go let's go back to the live chat um paradis says since that was the last chat line what's the last chat what no nothing is the last we're coming back next week says could you tell me more about your streaming setup i mean your background is it real room or caravan or something oh this this is real look i can touch it and interact with it it's it's real it's uh, mm -hmm. it's our living room uh so yeah it's not we're not in the camper van right now you know as, as mentioned previously if you like us on facebook you'll be able to see that uh, we broke our, our, our you know nz pocket guide mobile uh, <laughs> so there's a video of uh, there's a video of it being towed so uh, yeah we're not on the road right now uh, we were on the road literally a couple of days ago <laughs> uh, but yeah so now we're home and yeah no that's a, that's a real background this is an actual real couch we're not uh, you know it's not like a kiwi bird I know, like a lot of people nowadays, because everybody's on Zoom and everything, everybody has like those fake backgrounds and it's <laughs> kind of funny. But no, no, it's, it's yeah. real, like, you know. It's hard to tell what's real and what's yeah, not yeah. anymore. Look, that's why I pick that up all the time, you know, and I show it. You know, it's, it's all real, it's all real. But I am actually going to work uh, over the winter, which is uh, coming really soon in New Zealand. Uh, over the winter, I'm going to be working into a... a, a creating us a new setup for live sessions, something a little, I don't know, something a little different just for just for funds. So yes, keep, keep watching in the next, like, let's say six, I'm not pressuring myself too much. I'd say six, six to eight months, I may have a completely different setup for that. Mm -hmm. So here you go. If nothing else happened, we may have some extra things that happen to us and uh, we don't even need a new setup. Who knows? Who knows? Clay say so Rarotonga then every man and his dog seems mm -hmm. to go there and so I feel it will be set up for tourists and be a little staged uh, or so natural uh, where the other islands are more normal for lack of better words yeah I totally agree with you it's very commercial in, in Rarotonga so I will suggest to compare Tonga and Nui instead but everybody is different you know it, you know the good thing about Rarotonga is that you don't have to think <laughs> from yourself go there you don't you know what i mean yeah. safe is, so but i do like a, 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 a to travel and have a little bit more of an experience but yeah it is a very valid uh, place to go to of course yeah kimmy lauren is here um and do you want to complain that she's late like you did for uh, i was not complaining like you for Anthony, <laughs> do you want to diss uh, this kimmy lauren you as well you think everyone huh? that you think everyone is complaining not everyone's french robin just by saying something it's not a complaint <laughs> so kimmy lauren i know you're tuning up a little bit late but uh laura has been dissing on some people like anthony comstock which usually is like one of the first he was, ones to comment he, yeah he was like the 10th comment and he was on only the live 10th, chat, yeah so which you know. i thought was noteworthy to mention yes <laughs> Yes, you, you're just upsetting everybody right here. Oh. Anyway, so Kimono and says, uh, tuning it right at the end this time. Uh, hey, Tim. Hey, ya. Hey. And uh, she says, hope you're having a great day. Wigbix is looking handsome as ever. We're having he a fantastic day. Tea. We're a little groggy. <laughs> we just kind of like, try to recover. We just uh, finished the Tongaro crossing yesterday. Uh, we did 19.4 kilometers. It was a lot of fun. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of like you, you wake up a little stiff afterwards. Yeah, it was awesome doing the hike, but I feel like the next day is when I feel tired yeah. like I don't, yeah i was feeling pretty good doing the hike but man i i need an i need a nap <laughs> <laughs> it is not even 9 a.m <laughs> i'm ready for my morning wow. nap <laughs> Michael Connell is talking about orcas as well. And he says, Orca are also seen around uh, Fangapaparora uh, Peninsula and the Hibiscus Coast, uh, north of Auckland, during November to March uh, with their young ones. Again, um, time and place. Yeah. yeah it, it's so hard to, you know, you know how often we went to tours and literally the day after, the day before, or the afternoon or the morning, people are telling us, oh, yeah, we got to see orcas. It's so offer that you have that and sometimes you can just miss it out and i feel like because we've done like tens of those kind of tools and it happened to us like five times it feel like really often but yeah mm -hmm. finding all cars is, is kind of a rough but i did like the fact that you had what was the fact about all cars that you said that they're the most distributed uh mammal over 
this earth um, after humans. That's amazing. That's really yeah. cool. So yeah, no surprise there. Yeah. So do they go in like warm waters as well? I think they go in. They go in all sorts of water. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I, I pictured all cats <laughs> to be more like attracted to cold water. Yeah, so. they like oh, yeah. to feed. Well, it seems like they have quite a diverse palate. <laughs> yeah, you always see, feeding, see them like, hunting, uh, hunting seals. Yeah, so like they scary. they'll hunt seals in colder climates, but they also they go through the um like the bottom. The, what what in New Zealand, for instance, they hunt stingrays and things like that as well, and they go for like marine wildlife that's sort of on the um like dirty bottom of the of the ocean in shallow waters. So they'll just like scoop up things there. Really? Like wow. they'll, they'll have different. I guess they have different. Well, like humans, like humans eat different stuff depending on where they are in the world, and I guess orcas kind of have the same thing going on. I know that that last bit was just speculation. I just <laughs> I'm just thinking that might be the case. <laughs> uh, okay, David, that's another <laughs> uh, Okay, so Paradis said it was the last line last time. Okay, now I get it. So last time someone asked the question, but we didn't yeah. try it before. No, sorry about that. But good, good for you to remember and to actually ask the question. That's cool. PS3 Gaming Scotland. I, I wonder what your channel is about. <laughs> um, Scotland. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You can actually read that with the Scottish accent. Read, no, read no, the question. No. Come on, read the question. You in charge, you read the question. I'm not, not doing a bad Scottish accent. Read that accent question. For it. I will read the question read in my own accent. So, why did you start the channel and what is your favourite video you have uploaded? That's a nice question. Um, so, we started the channel because uh, we've been running uh, the largest travel guide to New Zealand for quite a while. Uh, this is the name of the travel guide. This is the URL right here. You can check it out if you want. Um, there's thousands and thousands of articles and we have many, many, many million readers. And so, we thought it would be a way for people which are like me that don't like reading to get the information as well. Um, so, yeah, that's basically what we started it. Uh, some of our favorite videos, I... So we try to make them really not personal. So our videos are usually quite factual. Um, if you check out, we have a web series called New Zealand's Biggest Gap Year, in which our challenge was to do 365 activities all around New Zealand in 365 days. So there is close to 400 videos in that playlist. It's a great way to travel New Zealand with us and see all that. We've done a lot. So as far as a, of, of a playlist, that's definitely our favorite playlist. If I have to pick a favorite video myself, I think the time when uh, we had to do a bungee jump in Queenstown and I could not do it, so I chickened out and Laura did it. I think that was really fun just to see me completely flail, fail miserably and Laura just kind of nailing it. If you have to pick one, which one would you pick? Well, how many videos do we have on the channel now? We have uh, more than, uh, I think we either close to 2,000 or 1,000 yeah. or something. A lot of videos. So it's really hard to choose one, um, but I think I'll just come... I'll come up with one that comes to the top of my head, and um, I'm not going to say Stratford. <laughs> um, I'm going to say um, Ulver Island in Stewart Island. Yay! I say that all the time, but basically there's a really cool island just off the coast of Stewart Island, which has loads of amazing birds, and just making that video was really cool to see lots of different wildlife. It was kind of like you're in a prehistoric era of New Zealand. Nice. Cool. So Kiwi Lauren says, awesome, the Tonga crossing is high on my list for my return to New Zealand. Uh, it's getting nice here in Saskatchewan. It's a bit icy. Spring start next Saturday and the snow is melting, so my runs are getting easier. Good. Photo of a Lifetime says, when we were in New Zealand by the lake in the North Islands, uh, this New Zealand family came with their boat on the edge of the lake. They gave us a free ride on the what more can you ask for? Lovely people. Yeah, that's nice. there are a lot of Kiwis have their own boats. Yeah, we, we, our neighbors, they all have boats. And so we hitch ride with them on the lake quite often. It's, it's quite a lot of fun. Yeah. Nathan says, are you going to have a quiet day after the stream because of the walking, uh, the Tonga Arrow Crossing? Uh, we have a fair bit amount of work. So I think we'll do some work. But, you know, we do some work on the computer quite often, you know, to work on the websites right here. So we get to and kind of relax a little bit. So I don't know how quiet the day is going to be. I don't think it's going to be too strenuous of a day. But, uh, I I'll saw... see if I manage to stay awake while working, but it can be pretty comfortable while sat in front of the com uh, in front of the computer. So uh, we may have set out with good intentions, but perhaps end up sleeping by the end of the morning. <laughs> well, that's just me anyway. <laughs> I've been working all day. <laughs> Robin's a trooper. <laughs> um, PS3 Gaming Scotland. The say again. Would you like to read that with the Scottish accent? No. Okay. I do not want to. Are they, <laughs> are, they the, uh, are they Lord of the Rings tour from Auckland and how much will a trip to New Zealand cost for a Lord of the Rings stuff? 
Um, so you can take day two from Auckland to go to Hobbiton, for example, but that's pretty much kind of like what you're going to be finding. There are some really fantastic uh, laundering tools in the South Island in some of the locations. There are some fantastic tools in uh, Central North Island with Hobbiton and in Pio Pio with Harry Fit Waitomo. And there's obviously some amazing laundering tools around the Wellington area, which is where the Weta Studios are and where a lot of things will be um Will be uh, will be filmed. Now, as when it comes to uh, how much would it cost, uh, a, you know, trip to New Zealand for laundering stuff, you need to give us more details. You know, how many people are you traveling with? How are you traveling with? Uh, you know, where are you wanting to stay? What type of accommodation? All those kind of things. What what are your list of activities? All that it it ranges widely. Like some people only spend about five thousand dollars. Some people spend you know uh, fifty thousand dollars. It really goes over the place. So. What we usually uh, do is that we get uh, you know people to actually do comments on any of our videos. You can comment and just give us much more details, and then we'll be able to kind of do a little bit of research and actually address that in the live yeah. session. It's a little bit easier, um, but yeah, it really it really is all over the place. Um, yeah, really all over the place. So the best thing you could do probably is go on to nzpocketguide.com, which Rob is going to show you the URL right now. And we do have a section on there dedicated to Lord of the Rings, you know, the different Lord of the Rings locations around the country. And if you just browse through the navigation bars, you'll find it quite easily. In our activities section, we have a Lord of the Rings section. Um, and have a, have a look at where the Lord of the Rings locations are. And then from there, you'll be able to plan um, you know, the towns you need to visit, um, what sort of accommodations are going to be there, how you're going to travel to get to those places. And yeah, just do some research on there. And um, that's a good starting point to start to understand, like, you know, how much it's going to cost you um, because you'll understand where you need to go and what and how you're going to travel around. OK. All right. Um... Uh, Michael Connell says, uh, we have the same experience with trying to see the elusive yellow-eyed penguin as you have with Orca. Third year, not a single one spotted on our trip. Oh, you should take a trip with Elm Wildlife Tour in Dunedin. Um, so far, I've had 100% luck with those guys. So there you go. Yeah, some of the actual like dedicated wildlife tours <laughs> are really good for seeing those more. Um, well, yeah, for seeing the yellow-eyed penguins, uh, especially especially in the Otago Peninsula. They have penguin place as well there, which is dedicated to uh, conservation for yellow-eyed penguins. Um, I have been lucky to see yellow-eyed penguins at Corio Bay. Um, so I guess I was, I was definitely one of the lucky ones, but yeah, um, they are they are rather elusive. All right, so as you know, <laughs> this video is not live. We always fake it. It's not a live show. It's <laughs> always pre-recorded. Um, there is absolutely no way that this video is live and we never interact with you. When you guys type something on the live chat, we never reply to it. So, for example, if someone was to ask us to give a shout out to their son called Bautista, we wouldn't be able to do it because it is a recording. Um, so because of that, we wouldn't be able to oblige and uh, good luck explaining that to your boy, Clay. Uh, Anthony Comstock stay, say, stay safe, but I'm here until the end. Oh, and by the way, I was late because I was dealing with some stuff at home. Apologize to him. <laughs> I'm sorry, You're Anthony. So rude. I'm sure you had so some rude. stuff to deal with. I know everyone has lives outside of this live chat, and I didn't appreciate that, so I'm sorry. Uh, all right. <laughs> and uh, Kieran Lauren says, fun ID, Clay. Uh, my son is here with me, uh, too, so can you say hi to Oh, But it's a recording, so I'm not able like, if you are Kimi Lorenz's son or uh, Clay Bryant's son, you don't trust your parents. If they tell you it's live, it is not. It is a recording on the computer. And, uh, you know, all that is recorded. So I cannot say hi to Reed. Uh, I cannot say hi, Reed, all the way from New Zealand. I can't do that, you know. I can't say hi, Bautista, all the way from the North Island. I can't do that because it's, re it's a recording. So I, I just, you know, everything is pre-recorded nowadays. It is not live. Anyway, uh, guys, thank you for joining us anyway, another week. Hi, Reed. <laughs> hi, uh, Bautista. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, yeah, thank you very much for joining us <laughs> on the live session. Uh, we were glad to talk a lot about uh, different stuff to do with New Zealand. Uh, PS3 Gaming Scotland had some really good questions. I also like uh, the question from Kieran. That was really good. Parody had some really cool questions. We had a good chat about Tonga with Clay. That was fun. Um, who else did we have that had some really good questions? Kieran. Yeah, Martina had uh, fun questions about Auckland. And uh, let us tell you about our Facebook uh, page. If you guys want to check it out, you're going to see us, uh, you know, 
sad and towing the car. Um, wow. so yeah, wow. we had Durai, AJ, all of you guys have been awesome. Thank you so much for all that. Nathan also, uh, which is based in Topo, was discussing with us about the Tongero crossing that he did with his school for geography. So that was really awesome. So thank you so much, all of you guys, for joining us for another live session. We'll do it again next week. It happened at 8 a.m. in New Zealand time every single week. There's a link in the description below um, for when it is on your side of the world. And on top of that, we already have preloaded all those live sessions. So you can go on the channel and you can kind of set yourself a reminder for all of that. So, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Um, Modaic Grove, would you be able to uh, say hi to... Aaron and tell her where the best college for marine biology is. So I can say hi to Aaron. Um, hi, Aaron. But again, it's not live, so we can't record. <laughs> um, but at Marine Biology College, and uh, we, yeah. we don't know anything of that. We're a travel channel, but so uh, we can tell you about awesome things to do in New Zealand. But I cannot possibly take the responsibilities of of help, of like advising your daughter to make such a life changing decision. So. Um, I can say hi to her and I can tell her where you can have amazing marine wildlife experience, but that's pretty much it. Um, did I start in Ratatouille the movie? No. All right, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. we see you next week. Uh, yeah, if you do have some more questions, pop in next week, up in the live chat. So in the comments of any of our videos, we're happy to oblige. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks all.